DreAllDay.com. Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com. Perfect time for this conversation with whatever subject you happen to be paying the most attention to right now. There's a lot of them. Getting your own information. I just talked about, I was just listening to my own episode of my own show, the Work On Your Game show, episode 1925. And if you're watching this on YouTube, the audio episodes come out first. The video come out comes out later. So 1925 might not be on YouTube yet if you're watching this when I first put this up. But anyway, episode 1925, the topic was do your homework. And that's all about getting the information before you start formulating an opinion, before you allow that opinion to harden into belief, and definitely before you go around telling other people what their perspective should be, chastising them for having the quote unquote wrong perspective, or absolutely before you make any uh, life decisions, unalterable life decisions based on inaccurate or incomplete information. And unfortunately, this is what's happening. I mean, if you are on social media, if you want to call YouTube social media, you see people doing this all day, every day. Right now, we had the topics of anything involving race, anything involving uh, politics and government. We have the COVID pandemic-ish, whatever you want to call that thing that's going on. And then whatever else might be going on in your local world, in your local environment, not necessarily mean geographically, but just the things that you pay the most attention to. These days, there's a lot of opinions being thrown around. That's what social media was created to do, allow us all to share our opinions and you know, speak our peace, which is a good thing. But at the same time, there's a lot of people sharing opinions and beliefs and don't even have the information. I, was, I mentioned in episode 1925, Malcolm Gladwell talked about in one of his latest books called Talking to Strangers, how he came to a little bit different conclusion about the Penn State case, about the child molestation case, child abuse case on Jerry Sandusky. He came to a little bit different conclusion than what the general public had come to. And Malcolm Gladwell said when he put his book out, a bunch of people criticized him because he seemed to be offering uh, like an apolo apologist tone for what happened at Penn State. And Malcolm Gladwell said in defending himself, he said, well, listen, the reason I came to the conclusion that I came to is because I went through all the court documents from that case and I read every single court transcript. And any of you know anything about court and big trials and court cases is that every single word is transcribed and you can read those court documents. They're publicly available for anybody to read, but you're talking hundreds, maybe thousands of pages of documents to read through in order to know exactly what every single person said, what questions they were asked, etc. Malcolm Gladwell said, I read every single document and that's how I came to my conclusion. But the people who went and wrote blog posts and articles trashing my conclusion didn't even read the fucking documents. But then they're trying to tell me that I'm wrong for the conclusion that I came to. They don't even have the information. And it was a really salient point because that's exactly what I see happening with so many people these days is that everybody has an opinion on something People don't even have the information. One thing that I, I mentioned many times on my show in the last few months, many of you have probably heard about this voter ID situation that's going on in all of America, where after the 2020 election, there had been a group of people who said, well, we need to tighten up the voter ID laws because we want to make sure that the elections that do occur are occurring uh, the way that they're supposed to occur. They're occurring fairly and you know, everybody is every vote is being counted properly and only the people who are actually eligible to vote are actually voting. I think that's a pretty fair, pretty fair thing to want to do. And it's been framed as that it's only the Republicans that are trying to do it. And it's the Democrats that are trying to stop the voter ID laws from coming in, which I don't quite, I don't know if that's exactly what it is. That's just the way it has been framed. And then it's been put out, even Joe Biden went and said this out of his own mouth, President Joe Biden, he said, this is Jim Crow 2.0. In other words, he's framing it as me and the Democratic Party. We are here to defend black people from these laws that are trying to disenfranchise blacks. And then you get all the, the black politicians and the Democrats are saying, well, yeah, they're trying to stop black people from voting. And then allegedly, again, the way it's been framed, the Republicans and the quote unquote white people or the MAGA Republicans are saying, hey, we're there trying to block black people from getting votes so the Republicans can win. I don't think that's exactly what it is. Again, this is the way that it's been framed on in the media. But the point of it is, the real thing that I'm bringing up, 
is for anyone to go out and say that, hey, this is Jim Crow 2.0 or they're trying to disenfranchise black people. Specifically, it started over to Georgia, the state of Georgia's voter ID law, a bill that was passed by, I guess, pushed through by the Republican Party in the state of Georgia. And Major League Baseball, I don't know if y'all remember this, they moved the All-Star game. It was supposed to be in Atlanta. They took it out of Atlanta and moved it to Colorado, I guess, as a, a penalty for the voter ID law in the state of Georgia. which makes no sense whatsoever in, in context or out of context because the Atlanta Braves baseball team plays 80 fucking times in Georgia over the course of the season. They didn't move any of those games out of Georgia. They moved one game out of Georgia as, I guess, they call themselves penalizing. But at the same time, who works at that stadium? Who would have made money? off of that who would have made money from in the atlanta area based on that all-star game being in atlanta who would have benefited from the all-star game taking place in atlanta a bunch of people of color so when the major league baseball when major league baseball took the game out of atlanta i guess they called themselves penalizing with georgia or holding georgia accountable they actually hurt a lot of the people that they claim to be helping so again in context or out of context that made no sense and the atlanta braves are playing 80 times in georgia they didn't move any of those games out they moved one game it was just it was basically a symbol all right this is all theater all this shit and the bigger point the reason i brought up the georgia voting voter id law is this people running around saying well it's jim crow 2.0 there's some people who are watching this right now who are saying yeah it is jim crow 2.0 Dre. they're trying to stop black people from voting or they said this or you're not gonna be able to do that and they're listing all the things that black people won't be able to do based on that bill let me ask you a question did you read the bill And I'm pausing there because I just want to give you a second to think about it. Because I know if you're going to run around offering an opinion on something, you better have the information. Did you read the bill? Because I went and looked up the bill. I did not personally read it, but at the same time, I'm not offering an opinion on it. Magic formula. The Georgia ID, Georgia voter ID law that recently got enacted, that Major League Baseball protested against, that Joe Biden said is Jim Crow 2.0, that bill is publicly available documentation. It is 95 pages, text, no pictures, 95 pages. Did you read the bill? If you did not read the bill, then why are you offering the pain on something where you do, at which you do not have the information? And this is what I'm talking about. Getting your own information means do not go off of, I don't care who it is. It used to be, let me offer y'all, I got some good news and some bad news for y'all. Here's the bad news. It used to be years ago, not too many years, let's say 10 years ago, you could turn on the news or you could follow certain people on social media. And there's still some, but you could follow certain people, a good amount of people on social media or watch the news or follow news outlets like a CNN or New York Times or Fox or MSNBC or whoever. And they would give you objective news. This is what happened. This is what occurred. This is what is taking place. It used to be like that. That's the, the bad news is, it's not like that anymore. Bad news is everybody has an angle now. Everybody is trying to persuade you and influence you to think in a certain way. There are very few, there are still a few, but there are very few, you gotta look for them. Very few outlets who are offering you objective, hey, this is what happened, and that's it. They're just telling you what happened and they're not adding anything to it. They're not, they're not um, slanting their reporting. They're not taking bits and pieces out to make things look a certain way. They're not mixing opinion in with fact. They're just giving you direct, this is what occurred and this is what you need to understand. There are very few that are still doing that to this day. So that's the bad news. The good news is now that you, you know, or more bad news is you have to do more work to get objective information these days. The amount of work you have to do to get objective information now, from this point, when this video comes out forward, is a lot more work than you used to have to do. All right, that's the bad news. The good news is, since you had to do this additional work to get direct information, you're gonna be a lot more informed, you're gonna be a lot smarter, and you'll be a, a lot more of a critical thinker. Your critical thinking skills will sharpen significantly because of this uh, requirement that is now on your head. All right, you have this requirement on you now because of the fact that nobody is giving you direct objective information anymore your job these days just so i'm clear your job these days is to get your own information you cannot trust the news outlets i talked about that in episode 1474 you need to understand that every person has an angle 
you need to understand that most people are not critical thinkers, that they just take whatever they hear on the surface, especially if it's something that they already agree with or something that they already disagree with. And they'll either put more on it, more sauce on it because they like it, or they'll flat out reject it because they dislike it. So you can't trust other people. You can't trust the news. Most of the media you can't trust unless you know their angle. Now, if you know somebody's angle, then you can take in their material because you know that they're going to slant things a certain way. I know if I see the New York Times write something about anything Republican, that they're going to slant it to be negative because that's what the New York, that's the position that the New York Times has chosen to play. If CNN talks about anything involving Donald Trump, they're going to make it sound negative because that's the role that they chose to play. This is just, this is where, who they are. Now that I know that, I can take in their material and now I know, all right, I know that they're going to slant that. I know they're going to try to make it sound a certain way. And this is just what it is. But you have to be a critical thinker, enough of a critical thinker to understand that these days it takes more work to be informed. So nowadays what we have is a bunch of people. We still got all the people, more people every day, but more uninformed people, more non-critical thinking people, more people throwing you their opinions and their beliefs that are not based in actual that are not based in complete fact. Now, people may have bits and pieces of facts, but then they mix them in with opinions and then tell you, well, that's a fact. No, no, it's not. So this is this is the hard work that you have to do now. So the bad news is there's a lot more work you have to do. It's not as easy to get informed. The good news is you will be much more informed. You will become much more of a critical thinker. You'll be a lot smarter individual and you'll be able to start noticing uh, some of the the garbage in people's thought processes and some of people's some of the many of the logical fallacies that people live their entire lives with not even understanding that they're logical fallacies because they they are not critical thinkers they're just going off what they heard and going off what they believe and being driven around by their noses being driven by emotion so this is the job that you now have as a human being if you want to be an informed person you must get all of your own information so let me tell you exactly how you do that then because i just told you that you don't know who to trust. So how do you know when you get some information that's objective? Here's what you gotta do. Get the information on a certain subject. Let's say you heard about a certain subject. You wanna find out. You wanna find out about the, the vaccine. You wanna find out about COVID. You wanna find out about the pandemic. You wanna find out about, about find out about the voter laws or whatever. If it's something as black and white, if it's something that's black and white and there's a, a fact, such as let's say the voter ID law, go look up the voter ID law, get the bill and read the fucking document. It's 95 pages, read it. If you want to be informed, read the document. They say if you want to hide something from people, put it in a book, especially black people. If you want to hide something from black people, put it in a book because people don't read. And that's not just black people that don't read. People don't read, people don't think, and people are lazy. So if you want to be an informed person, do the exact opposite of these three things. So, and that's episode 1772, by the way, that I talked about those three things. So go, if it's something black and white, you can just get direct information, such as a law or a bill. You can read the direct bill yourself and know exactly what it says with no equivocation. Now, if it's something that is more based on different people are saying different things. So let's just say something like the COVID vaccine or you no, know, should kids wear masks or do kids need to get vaccinated to go to school? And everybody has different information. And this scientist is saying this and this scientist excuse me, is saying this, and this doctor says this, and this doctor says it, and everybody has different things, but they all have maybe certain credibility or credentials. How do you know who to trust? Here's the answer. Listen to a bunch of people on every side of an argument. Listen to a bunch of people on every side, get what everybody is saying, and then your job as a critical thinker is to figure out, your job is to suss out what is the truth in all of these things that are being said. All right, so everybody has something to say, Where's the truth out of all these things? And it's your job to try to figure that out. This is where your critical thinking skills come in. And this is the job that you have now. I'm sorry that it's more work, but to be informed, this is the world that we're in. All right, we all help create this world. All right, it's not my fault. It's not your fault. It's not necessarily social media's fault. We all got on social media and we started using it and we let this thing grow the way that it did. And the mainstream media had to compete with social media. And this is the world that we got. All right, we all played a part in creating this so now we got to deal with it and that's what it is so send me a text tell me the best insight you got from this video my number is 305-384-6894 it's right down there in the video description 305-384-6894 and if you haven't yet claimed your free copy of my newest book it's called the third day go to the link down below in the description i'll send you a free copy of the book just cover the shipping for me help me out i'll send you the book that's both down in the description work on your game dre all day